did they do that? But you see, that's all off. See, the shadow should be completely different. The, the pores should move. This is usually something about how their videos start. We're gonna watch more Corridor Crew today. VFX artists react to bad and great CGI number 21. Let's check it out. Three coolest action moments of all time. What is the movie? All of the background you're seeing is not real. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artists React. We got Sam on the couch today instead of Clint. Rip Clint, but you know, I, I got the funnies and uh, I got those natty reactions. I have no idea what we're going to be taking a look at today, except for one thing that I'm super excited about, which is The Mandalorian. Yes. More on that the later. One thing. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Oh, we're starting with the good. Wait, oh, damn, what is this? A, this? That's fully CG. Yes, that's fully CG. Has either of you seen this movie? I don't know what we're looking I at. I love this movie. What is it? It is, movie. it is a feast for the eyes. What is the movie? Tell me! Gaunt's zero. Gaunt's is basically just one long fight scene. Damn, like this looks monsters. crazy. So if you're looking for something more than that, you're going to be disappointed. Wow. If you're looking for one long cool fight scene of monsters, it's all in awesome CG. This looks like Ready Player One. It like just <laughs> really basically takes all the coolest guns. Spartan lasers, Akira lasers, mostly lasers from pop culture, and combines <laughs> it in a really cool monster fight scenario. Damn. I need to see this. Hey, and there's a target wait, 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 wait. Oh, Dude. He just went to town. Wait, hold up. Whoa. Just, this dude's multiplying Whoa. in the air. <sighs> this guy getting chopped and then regrowing is such a cool effect. And it's not that easy to do with complicated models like this. A boolean is one object and you subtract another object from it. So when this guy gets chopped by swords, they're basically booleaning, you know, the different parts of him and then like changing those booleans to regrow stuff. It's like and a 3D printer. Yeah, it actually is like a 3D printer. This scene, oh my god, this is top three coolest <laughs> action moments of all time. But the creativity and the weaponry in this, wow. oh my god, it is so insane. Just wait. Was it gonna slice through him like a lightsaber? Better than that. <laughs> Better? Upload? <laughs> what does that mean? Upload where? To outer space. Wait, what? <laughs> it's a teleportation gun that Whoa. teleports chunks of the monster away from the monster. Whoa! Oh my god! He teleported his brain! Imagine if in Star Trek cool. they uh, oh. so like, cool. It just cool. His brain. That's how we'll kill him. <laughs> So cool. Like, I love that they have to like, come up with like a texture map that's basically just like a cat scanned like brain. Yeah. yeah. And that's like just probably an animated texture map that's playing on like a plane as they like, you know, booing oh, away his head. That's one way to do it for sure. Wait, so that's more of like a reverse 3D printing gun. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Somewhere in space. Fascinating. Wow. Eating a very good sandwich with some very fine deli meats. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Monster brain deli meat. <laughs> Check out this transition. So he's teleporting, right? One slice at a time. It's first person view. What happens when your eyes get teleported? Oh, whoa. That's yeah, so okay. cool. He's seeing it go in the moment. He what the eyes. hell is this movie? The frame wow. that's sort of like transition to the Is there some sort of like quantum pairing stuff going on here? How is he able to think when his brain's in another location? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is this, oh, is yes. this whole movie basically just one giant like reel for the effects company that yep. did it? Yeah. Okay, don't show me anymore. I gotta watch this tonight. <laughs> It's not true. It's bullshit. <laughs> yes. Yes. Finally, some, yeah. some great green oh, screen in this movie. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Classic. I'm probably wondering why we're we reacting to this. Where are the visual effects? Well, the whole thing's I green screen. Tell. Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> They're on a green screen. This entire rooftop is a green screen. Here's the thing. For how bad but yet good the, the room is, this green screen is really well done. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean. The first time I watched clips of these scenes. Like, I was like, oh, something's up with it. But I, I instantly forgot about it and stopped, like, analyzing it. Like, it was so you have to do <laughs> to where I was just like, oh, maybe the lighting's just a little weird or the camera's weird. But I wasn't like, oh, green screen. <laughs> Hollywood movies, this is pretty solid green screen. Did the perfect mirror symmetry of that building behind them. They kind of, like, rotated their 360-degree image just a little bit. Oh, my God, you're right. <laughs> For me, the thing that breaks down the most on this is just the lighting and yeah. the edge feather on yeah. the actual brick. <laughs> Especially that shot where he's coming out of the doorway there. Dude, by the way, like, yeah, where does that door lead? Where does that door lead? <laughs> just it's like a manhole. Box. What they're doing is, is it looks like a giant panorama that's just at a very far away distance. So there's no parallax from like that house just behind the building and like the building's off in the distance. It's just an image. But it is tracked yeah. in 3D space just all at the same distance behind the wall. It's weird, but like it's directed 
in a way, like, so it's such a clear vision. It's a good indication, like, if you have really clear director vision, you're gonna make something unique. <laughs> yes! These sets are insane. Where do you think they found this uh, warehouse room to uh, film in? <laughs> well, judging by the previous Star Wars movies, they probably made a giant green screen stage <laughs> and then filmed everything with the actors having no idea where they were or what the context of what they're doing. But this is a TV show. They don't have time to do all the effects for replacing we're the background on every single shot. We don't have time for that. Okay, what we're getting at is in this scene, all of the background you're seeing is not real. It is what? a real-time rendered image on a LED screen. It is what? Not a green screen, and it is not a real set either. There's there's like parts a of the set that are real. Pretty much everything in the foreground that the actors are interacting with is real. Okay. But, you know, ah. if you just go 10 feet beyond that, suddenly it becomes a Whoa. fake set. People have done this in the past before, yeah. but the thing that makes this revolutionary is that they're able to utilize it with a moving camera. Mm -hmm. The camera, they are filming oh my God. is 3D tracked, and the screen is constantly adjusting the perspective of the background yeah. to match the camera. Oh, how cool. That's crazy. And the only way <sighs> you can do that is by using a real-time game engine. This is not done after the fact. This is done frame by frame. So everything the camera is capturing goes through the lens, and that's why it looks so natural. The greatest thing about this oh, is that wow. it gives control back to the cinematographers to actually line up their shot. It's a very seamless, very streamlined process, and it allowed this whole production to get all these crazy... What amazing technology. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy how you can do interior and exterior scenes with it. At all times, there's a guy with Unreal loaded up on a workstation, and if they are trying to get a certain shot, they literally can just move all the assets on wow. screen. Wow, that's there fascinating. They shoot it. So you can always Jesus. get a like, flawless composition. So we were actually fortunate enough to experience this technology in person. Unreal invited us out to one of their demonstrations with one of their light stages. Now on the stage, they actually had a scene set up. You can see really clearly how the ambient light of this real-time environment that's being rendered in wow. Unreal is actually affecting the lighting on us in the foreground. How and fascinating. The edges look good because there's no like keying that needs to be pulled. Like our hair actually looks correct. The light blooms correctly around us. And most importantly, when you're there acting, you can just look around and see the environment. You don't have to pretend. Yeah, you can just yeah. see it. What's really cool about the stage is it also solves <laughs> a lot of the common issues you face when filming on a green screen, such as very reflective and glass transparent objects. Yeah that you can still properly see through. Trying to pull a key on some of this stuff is basically impossible, and this fixes all that. It's so inspiring that like, literally right now, I'm working on a mini version of this that what? we're gonna have in our own oh. studio. We won't have the LED walls, but it's gonna have the capability to 3D track a camera in as we're filming in, yeah. in real time. We are making a video about all of that, and if you wanna see it, subscribe. This is what was causing all the fuss. Here we go. This is what we all came here for. Child. <laughs> this is a creature, and they can't afford to have, you know, eight episodes of a CG creature like this in every scene. So they have an amazing actual physical puppet. But for shots like this where he's walking down the ramp, that's a CG Baby Yoda. And what's interesting is that they actually fine-tuned and revised the animation of the CG Baby Yoda <laughs> oh, to be kind of puppet-like. <laughs> to make it seem like the real puppet the entire time. That's a really common issue you face with visual effects, is very often reality is not what we've been trained to see in movies. You know, squibs, yeah. when people get shot in movies, that's not what real bullet hits look like. There's reality, and then there's Hollywood reality, and everyone thinks that Hollywood <laughs> reality is what things actually look like. So if you make it look like real, they think it looks fake. <laughs> At some points, you're like, obviously, that's not a living creature. Even with the most flawless rendering and uh, movement and animation, are you, you're never going to convince someone that it's real. But if you can convince them <laughs> it's a puppet, well, puppets are real. So now exactly. it's real. Exactly. <laughs> but like, Interesting you know, anytime thought. you see like Baby Yoda actually walking, it's a CG Baby Yoda. Yeah. So they're currently filming season two of The Mandalorian right now, and there's so much that they learned on making this one that they're basically designing sets around this concept, and I love that idea so much. Oh, I can't wait for season two. Oh, it's gonna look even better. <laughs> <laughs> We go. Well, we need to finish this show. Witcher. Bathtub like scene. This show. It was a fun one. Man, I haven't actually seen The Witcher on Netflix just yet, so I'm getting a little preview. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. What the hell is this? Wait, hold on, hold up. Yeah. Wait, you, wait, cast. wait you, got the wrong, you got the wrong show, Christian. The Hexer. What is the Hexer? Whoa. What? 
Oh, you were saying we should watch the dragon part, Ren, and... <laughs> that's, that's not... Wait, this is The Witcher. Oh, yeah, it is. The casting is oh, on wow. point. Henry Cavill has made a complete transformation in this character. <laughs> what is this? Like, what is this? It's The Witcher. But, like... This is the original Witcher? Okay, so it's a Polish... Witcher movie that came out in 2001. It's the original Witcher. I don't know why you like the show so much, Ren. It sucks. <laughs> oh my god. It's Woo. more disturbing in some ways. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Dude, the dragon yes! Guy. Got that nose, that no. dank cloud. He's just <laughs> vaping sulfur. <laughs> they probably just had no money to throw out visual effects, let alone anything they're else. Like, should we do the dragon? We, there's no way we can do it well. And they're like, sure. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. Oh, Come on, cool. that was actually kind of cool. <laughs> Are they running there? Did they actually run there? <laughs> they came out of fire. I assume oh, it was I comps. It. Yeah, it was comps. It was comps. No, it's, What's the that's real thing stunts. you can imagine? A dragon explodes, three guys on horses fly out of the flames. And you're like, yeah, that makes sense. I was tripped. Anyways, that was uh, if you guys have a TV show, movie scene, a good, bad VFX, doesn't matter. Please do it in the comments below. Actually, I have a special request. I want to do a reaction to game cinematics. So if you guys have a game Ooh. cinematic that shows a really cool effect. Dude, I've got like 30. Oh, Batman Arkham Origin. Ready to show you. Every but, fatality. Yeah, yeah. Too, that works. <laughs> I've heard tales of your kind, Witcher. We're very used to seeing dragons in, in shows and movies. And so these sure. dragons, specifically the gold dragon, suffers a little bit. This shot stands out to me as being a little rough, and it's a TV show, I get it. Those CG dragon feet are touching that wall, and you can see, like, between its toes, the wall is still bright. And it's a little strange. Like, look how dark the dragon's feet are. The dragon's feet are dark because there's no light hitting them. The Especially cat. since it's like, you have this huge dragon yeah, body, I hate, almost I entirely hate occluding this whole Ruins thing. Ruins no, noticed, and noticed it right, right away. The wall should be pretty dark in general exactly. underneath him. The light's coming from that one hole in the cave, that's basically acting as a giant softbox. Yet the dragon's Is shadows that? here are crisp on the wall. It's a little strange having crisp shadows from a that, giant that's, softbox. It's have fun, I like that. The root cause of the shot here, and what makes it seem weird, is the fact that they're blending a... Uh, a live action plate that's in a challenging lighting scenario with a CG dragon. Whereas hmm. I feel like if you were to reapproach this shot, it would probably be better to make the entire environment 100% CG. When you have a 3D model of a dragon and you're trying to have him go through a live plate, what you're doing is you're guessing the three dimensional geometry of that space. If you don't get it like spot on, it can start looking a little bit weird where the scene feels flat or flatter than it should be. And that, I think we see that with the feet here. I feel like they blew their entire VFX budget on the opening scene of the first episode. Yeah, 100%. That's a great opening scene. Boom, nice slice. It's like chopping a crab leg, man. It's great. This was a great scene. Watson? Like, yeah. opening the show, when I saw this, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be great. Ugh. Ugh. That's cool. See, that's yeah, satisfying. See mouth? That's Dude, good. and then his face there. And right. seeing how like his whole body just kind of like Limp limps yeah. out. See, that's great though. That's some good VFX. Yeah. That's like in the moment in Gaunt's when oh. his brain teleports away. He's like, ah, yeah. you, man, you freaking pulled that that humdinger <laughs> on me by throwing the original Witcher. <laughs> so I'll never forgive you for that. Hey guys, we have a special message for you. <gasps> yeah, that's right. Leap year is today when this video comes out, and we wanted to do something super special. So we went back in time and we grabbed one of the most demanded, one of the coolest items ever. The anime self-driving car long sleeve. That's right. What? And it's also going to be paired up with a one-time only retro dashboard magnet. So yeah. if you guys are on Sweet. the store Gotta this weekend magnet. and this weekend only, the anime self-driving car long sleeve and we the dashboard magnet is gonna be available only then. There's a bunch of other stuff on the store. We got backpacks, we got hats, joggers, celery. Yeah. We're selling celery Celery. Now. Quarter Seven celery. Seven inch carriage bolts. That's it, we hope you guys head on over to CorridorDigital.store. We've got the anime self-driving car long sleeve back from the vault, as well as a bunch of other really cool awesome. stuff. Awesome. Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of guests on this show lately, but I gotta say, it's pretty uh, pretty comfy here. I could get used to this. Every Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific, we got a new video coming out. Thank Thanks for watching. watching. <laughs> Thank you. Clap your hands. Thank you. Sweet digs.
Sweet. I'm really excited for their game cinematic one. That one's gonna be awesome. If anything, what they should be covering a lot will be like cinematic trailers, mm -hmm. because sometimes those scenes in the trailers aren't in the actual video games. They'll have plenty of great, I'm sure they got like one too many recommendations to go off of, but I'm definitely gonna be keeping a lookout for that one. They introduced us to some pretty cool stuff. The Hexler, gotta watch that as oh, soon as yeah, possible. Yeah, I gotta check out the Hexer. <laughs> that <laughs> dragon, man, that, that blows dragon heart out of the water. In some ways, that dragon was more disturbing than the the one that you get in the Witcher Netflix series. It kind of looked like if uh, Lawnmower Man was a dragon. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit, with especially bit. the eye close-up, which uh, I was just watching, I think, A Caravan of Garbage, where they did the Godzilla 99, and that has an eye close-up that's uh. not great, and this one is even more not great <laughs> than that. The Godzilla footage just looked incredible. We gotta watch that right away. I don't yeah. even really know what they fully discussed here about that. <laughs> I was just yeah. like, you're just introducing us to how awesome this movie is. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, you're just kind of illustrating that this looks insane and has like cool theoretical technology in it. That's certainly just an amazing looking demo. I, I love when studios do stuff like that where they're like, this is awesome. Also, this is just one gigantic business card yeah, for us. exactly. It kind of reminded me of like a Kung Fury type thing, something that looks like it's going to be just a fever dream yeah. of crazy set pieces. One thing I really loved about about what they talked about here was the real life reality versus movie reality. It's kind of like Instagram models, you know? Do girls really look like that in real life? And do they say as many inspiring things on the regular? No, that is social media reality. Oh, sorry. But bad. in real reality, they're all ugly and disgusting mm -hmm. and obese as F. They're the trolls who are giving you hate comments. Yeah, so there's real life. <laughs> and, then, and then there's movie and, life. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like what I've heard about doing impressions. When you do an impression of someone, you want to actually go a little bit over the top with it because yeah. if you go for a hundred percent accuracy, people might not actually pick up on it. It's kind of a strange thing for the ear and I didn't actually associate that with movies, that if mm -hmm. you go for a hundred percent reality, like what they're talking about with the squibs, because I've never seen someone get shot in real life. It's also kind of like a punch, you know, like- <laughs> Oh if, yeah, when punches I, don't sound like that. Yeah, when, when, you, when someone gets punched in real life, that, that sound really hurts. Like if you hear it in real life, like that, that it's bang like a, against the skull yeah. and then the knuckle hitting. It's a really painful sound, but in a movie, it just doesn't translate. Like there's something that seems off if there isn't a sound effect, a mm. punch sound effect. What they did with the covering the Mandalorian, I had heard about that, but I hadn't seen any footage. And that's kind of like what Nolan did for Interstellar actually, where mm. to be in the space sequences and for the actors to feel like it's really real, they built these like digital sound stages so that way they could really feel like they were in outer space. To know that they did that with the Mandalorian, especially after what they did with the prequels for Star Wars, I really just admire the hell out of that because one thing I'm always giving actors credit for in these big CGI blockbuster films, how much imagination these actors have to pull, even if they have great directors who are able to tell them what's there and what's not there. At the end of the day, they're still working solely off of their imagination. So with the cinematographers, the VFX artists working hand in hand, like getting real in time game engineers. Yeah, you still have to use your imagination. At the same time though, it makes it easier to hone in on your imagination when you can get lost in the images around you. I thought that was so beautiful and the fact that they're even updating it and, and working around it for the season two, I can only imagine how much better it's gonna look because there are scenes in The Mandalorian that they were showing us and I had no idea those backgrounds were CGI. It's like, yeah, some of it is real, but for the most part, they're still working primarily with CGI. Even with that screen, it's still CGI. Or even if it's a real picture, yeah, it's not actually there, and they're so convincing, it looks like they went to locations and shot. That's the most exciting thing from this video to me, is I remember when Oblivion dropped and I saw a kind of behind the scenes thing where they showed this technology, and yeah, the digital map painting, the digital environments. I remember when drones first came on the scene, and like the amount of time and equipment you can save there just seems exponential, and it's the same here. I can only imagine, it's like they said they're about to get that kind of setup in their studio, so I can only imagine what kind of breakthrough are gonna make that even easier to access mm -hmm. and then you can have an even wider breadth of possibilities with sure. your movies. And then yeah, with reality, you know, that bridges so many gaps because not only is it great for the actors, but it's also, yeah, perfect for the lighting, the motion of the camera. And in terms of that reality versus movie reality, that is a great point. And it's something I think they've touched on before because they've done it with sound mm -hmm. and the way like when people fire guns, the order you usually hear the pop and the, you know, impact in is not the same. And like with gore a lot of the time, like. I've in the Museum of Death, they have a lot of pictures of actual gore, and it doesn't look quite like movie gore, and there's like a way in which real gore kind of 
doesn't look quite real, <laughs> partly because we're conditioned by movies. I find that stuff fascinating. But, but I, think I think that's why violence in movies like Tarantino of what he does with like the squibs and stuff, I think that's why that can be fun. There's always that age old argument of like, is this promoting violence mm -hmm. and stuff? But when you see like movie violence versus real life violence, it's two completely different things. Oh, yeah. One yeah. is greatly unsettling and very disturbing. And then there's a reason one version of like a whole bunch of blood splatter can be fun. Mm. Uh, and that's because it's it's whimsical. Yeah. <laughs> it's not real, you know? Yeah. All right, Corridor Crew, thanks for putting this one together. We're gonna be keeping a lookout for your games reaction one. That's gonna be awesome. Subscribe to Corridor Crew if you haven't done so already. Make sure to subscribe to The Real Rejects. Click our notification bell to get notified whenever we got a YouTube video up. Last but not least, let's end this with a... Matt Beer. It was also your birthday recently, since uh, I come up with most of the shout outs. John's gonna shout you out right now. Sing him happy birthday, John. Matt Beer. The regular birthday song costs money, so I'm gonna sing you happy birthday myself, but in a slightly different melody. Matt Beer, I love you. And many more times we will make out that last part I wasn't supposed to tell people about, but you know, it's time that we live free or die hard.